Everybody hear me? I'm, I'm not Kristen. Okay, just so you know. We'll, we'll go from there. But my name is uh, Rick Pletka, and I am the oldest presenter today, but with the least amount of time at the office. I recently retired um, from education after working 36 years, and I uh, joined the uh, South Shore in uh, November. Um, so I can have an actual picture. Not any, I can just tell you there that I uh, am showing my son at, at 1983. And then I show you how I look at a mud volleyball tournament uh, with the South Shore. In my 36 years of uh, working with um, education, I started out uh, teaching at Lowell High School and uh, got into athletics there. I moved to uh, Highland and I ended up being the uh, uh, head football coach there and head track coach at Highland. I moved to uh, Griffith High School and uh, became the athletic director at Griffith High School and uh, also ended up being the buildings and grounds and transportation director there before I uh, retired. I have a, a Super Bowl type thing here because of the fact that uh, that is this week. And um, one of the people that I always have had a kind of a, a longing for is Mike Singletary. Uh, he seemed to always be the person that Made it a pro football team often reflects its city's character, and in Chicago, the work ethic prevails. The Bear defense, true to the image of a city with big children, rolls up its sleeves and puts in a full day's work on Sunday. Like the monsters of the midway before them, Chicago defenders are a punishing, prowling band of tactics. Singletary, number 50, stopped so many runs at the line of scrimmage that it was like having an extra down line. A Pro Bowl selection in 1983, Singletary is continuing the Bears' tradition of great middle linebackers. Mike Ditka had a plan in 1983, and that's what that video was there. And if you would watch that whole video clip, the only personnel that kind of changed in that time was a gentleman that they called the fridge, number 72, to get them to the Super Bowl. And that's what I think we're looking for doing, is to have a plan. And to have a plan, you have to have a focus. And Mike Singletary definitely had a focus. And Mike Ditka had a plan. It is a time of, of Athletics, I think we need to look outside the box. And this is what I've been trying to do the last couple of months. When I was in high school athletics, one of the things where a big topic of conversation was con concussions. And people keep reading more and more about concussions in sports, especially contact sports. So now we need to look at sports that are going to be generated from the young and move towards the adults. So we're going to have to look at non-traditional things. How many people here have ever seen a stacking competition? I mean, that's amazing. A stacking competition is amazing what these young people can do with these red cups that we used to play beer pong with. <laughs> but it's amazing. And there's this young man over at Griffith. He and his teammates set some type of Guinness World Record and they stack any of these cups. And these are the kind of things that are non-traditional. Everybody now goes to a picnic and throws bags. You know, these are non-traditional things, and this is what we're looking at getting involved with in the area. And we have just secured the first state championship of the bag championship, which they call Cornhole, which will be held here in Hobart in June. And this is pretty exciting for us. We also have been bringing in uh, the last couple of years table tennis. It's called Butterfly. And if you have never gone to one of these championships, and it doesn't matter the age of the competitors, it's impressive. And they play at the uh, Lincoln Center. Rowing. I've met with a few people in the uh, area here where they're trying to get more rowing going into some of our waterways. And Cal College and I have met about the, uh, getting more young people into rowing. And then fencing. 
Fencing is one that is now getting there. I met with the Northwest Indiana Fencing Club that's located in St. John, and Lowell High School now has a fencing club, and they started out with just a few people and now have grown immensely in the last couple of months. We will continue to bid with the NCAA and the NIAA, and with the expansion of the athletic uh, complex at Purdue Cal, we're going to have more opportunities, and of course, then some of the things that are to be done in some local, locales with improving their athletic facilities will allow us to do this. One of the things that I heard all the time when I was an athletic director, and we have what we call fence talk, and that means then while the athletic event is going on, you stand by the fence and supervise, but everybody wants to talk to you. And we always used to hear all the time about parents saying, man, daughter or my son is on this travel baseball team, travel softball team, volleyball. It costs us so much money. Our goal is to bring those tournaments here. With your assistance and our partnership to bring them here so we can reduce some of those parental costs. I'm on the board of directors of this, this uh, corporation or, or this uh, group here called Sports Indiana and they have uh, been given grant money from the state of Indiana to help us subsidize some of the things that are coming into the state of Indiana for tourism and, and events. And we need to use those and utilize those. And so we will be applying for those as we get things that will qualify. We try to, as much as possible, do some of the local things that I have been able to establish in my 60 years here in the region and be able to attract my relationship to help us. Jason Evans, who owns Catch-22, was a former football player of me. When we had Monsters in the Midwest that came here for the Crown Point Sportsplex in November, I asked him to put it on the marquee with welcome them. And those are the kinds of we would like, things that we'd like to do with more people, to welcome our guests here. Because of my past history, I've had that establishment of being able to talk to and be with many of my former colleagues at the high schools. I met with the two local athletic conferences and tell them our new role. And I have to explain to them, and I think they have to, they're understanding it, that they have facilities that we can use to bring events here. Because it's about money for them too. And they need to get money generated. It, most people know this, and maybe some people don't, but the athletic department is a separate entity. It doesn't get subsidized by the school district. It only gets generated by ticket sales and fundraisers. I was talking to an athletic director from Avon High School by Indianapolis, and he was talking about how he has a band that has a band contest down there at the uh, Lucas Oil uh, Dome that stays there for three days and sleeps in their gym because it's cheaper to sleep in the gym than into a hotel. But they're also getting money for their athletic department. So we're looking at doing those type of things with the local uh, school districts and the colleges. I think it's important to make sure that we're out there doing, making these excellent relationships. And that's what I'm trying to do. There's new technology, and, and Ty did a great job of the new technology, but I'm still kind of the old school. And I've been out as much as possible to meet some of the people that I have never been able to meet in my former career in housing. And we've had many times where I've been able to go out and just meet the people that are at Jack's and Crown Point Parks and the BMX steel, steel wheels. I've just tried to make as many visits as possible, and I think within the last two or half months or so, I've, I've gone to at least 25 people to meet them about their clubs. I try to get with everybody as much as possible. I try to, as we've had these groups in, make sure that when the group comes in from a distance that they're greeted, I try to meet them, their event planner at the hotel, make sure that every, all the accommodations are fine, make sure the plan for their event is fine. And with my past experience of, of handling events, I'm able to get to know what their needs would be. They might have forgotten about they might need a meeting room. They might have forgot that they need to have a plan on telling their their guests where the hotels are that are going to be next to the other hotel, the host hotel, or the restaurants. And I've tried to, as much as possible, admit and go to as many events which we are sponsored or which were not sponsored in the last one and a half, half months, and probably been between 15 and 20 of them. I'm probably closer to 20, because this last weekend I went to the Bags Bowl that was held at the Radisson, and I also went to the high school dance and, 
and uh, the, uh, sorry, high school dance competition that was at Munster High School. We uh, tried to, as much as possible, get press releases out, um, not only just locally, but nationally. Uh, this week we'll be releasing the national um, press release for the Cornhole Association State Championship. Every event is important. We have over 30 on the calendar right now, but these are our three largest ones. The Leon Triathlon is coming to Hammond in June. You can see it gets national and international exposure. Way the Lutheran Basketball is going to be held here at uh, Belfort University coming up here in March. And you can see about the booking of the rooms about over 2,400. And we have the NSA uh, World Series coming here um, in July, a big week for uh, Jenny. Uh, in uh, Crown Point. Uh, we now have that, but we have the Ohio Valley uh, Baseball, so we have exciting things. So we have more people that need rooms, which is a great problem that we have available that week. So we're going to be working on that. I just wanted to show a short clip here, okay, of what the NSA World Series is because it's a big event. And I took this with me to the NSA National Convention down in uh, Florida because some of the people there, they have their own state tournaments, but they really don't have okay, any idea what we do here in Northwest Indiana. We've taken every hotel room from one state line to the other. We have almost every softball facility available from one uh, end of the state to the other side on the, up here on the lake shore. So that just gives you some ideas on what we are here to do for you. And if you hear an event that is coming in sports related, let us know and let us involved. I'd like to meet with you, I'd like to meet with the group, and we'll do everything we can in our power to make it the premium event, <laughs> to make them want to return. My trivia question is, in December of 1983, how many consecutive hours did Northwest Indiana temperature stay below zero? Not this year, we've been cold. 1983. I'll oh, guess. There's a guess. Zero. That's no, that's guess. not correct. Oh. <laughs> but that's a good guess. What happens if we don't have a, 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 a correct answer? Start throwing out numbers. Closest, closest win. Five. Five. Thirty-seven. Forty-eight. Twelve. Keep going higher than forty-eight. <laughs> Seventy is still low. Two. One. Pardon me? No, we'll go as close as one swing. We're going to give it to that man 100 hours. We'll go to 100 hours. Thank you very much.